everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and we're back today for the second part of the video where we're taking a look at the Black Widow Monarch pencils and we've been doing a spot of colouring in beautiful letters to colour and share. So you can see I'm all organised here. I have done a bit of work on the colouring page and this is just to kind of speed things up because I did want to try and keep this to two videos. So as you can see I'm also prepared because I have my tea. So we're going to get zoomed in and I'm going to talk a little bit about the colour combination combinations that I've used in the absence of filming and really what I wanted to do was just play a bit more with these pencils and kind of build up more of an opinion of them and what I have found is even though this paper maybe isn't the best to play with these pencils I've managed to get some nice blending on the go and you can see some of that in some of these areas here. I've found some really nice combinations as well. Uh, for these leaves here in particular, this is one of my favourites. As you know, I am a fan of the green. So start with these darkest leaves first. And I've used leaf green and washed green. So we can just get these finished off. So I'm just going to take off here and maybe get zoomed in a little bit more. Maybe that much? Is that good? So after reading your comments under the last video as well, I am in agreement and I can't remember who it was that posted it, so I apologise. But somebody said that they find that they generally get on better with the Black Widow pencils once they've got a layer of pencil down on the paper and I would be very much inclined to agree with that um, and I think if you go lightly with that first layer it just makes life that little bit easier and I say I have talked about this before it is dependent on the paper but I do think as well as I said again in the previous video I haven't used these pencils in such a long time so you know it's, it's kind of like um if you get on a bicycle for the first time in years, you know, sometimes it takes you a wee while to get used to what you were doing. Now, the other colour that I've been using as well as a sort of accent colour is opal. And you can see very, very slightly down here that I've just sort of put a tickle in. And it was more just to give a little bit of depth. And the fact that this colour is definitely more turquoise than green, because it's blended in with the other colours, which these pencils do very well. It's not blatantly obvious that it's oh it's it's you know it's like really turquoisey. It fits in with what we're doing, and I say it just gives you that nice little little accent. So I really I really wanted to utilise as many of the greens as possible, and that's one of the reasons I uh, I plumped for this picture because in this set there are a lot of greens. This idea of them being like a supplemental set of pencils, green is the type of colour that you can never have too many variations of because a lot of the adult colouring books do have some kind of foliage in them. Uh, again, I think it's just associated with relaxation. You know, they often say the two best places if you want to be relaxed to go for a walk is in a forest and on the beach. So obviously that forest thing kind of follows through. Uh, plus as well, I think that Colouring things that are uh, all of a natural disposition, I find that in itself quite calming and relaxing. Now, what, what I have found just in the little bit that I've done already, and again, just having used these pencils a little bit more, they, because of the softness of the core, they, they don't keep a point very well. And that's just something that happens if you've got a softer pencil. There is quite a lot of sharpening going on, but I haven't had any problems in terms of breakages. And I know that can be a thing sometimes. A lot of that's got to do with transport. I haven't had a pencil that I've had to keep sharpening because it's it's breaking, uh, which is really nice as well. And it's something that I'm always a bit concerned about when I buy softer pencils like Prismacolors or these Black Widows because you don't know how far around the world they've gone a lot of the time and you don't know how they've been transported. So, it, you know, you can just be unlucky sometimes. And I do wish that companies would take a bit more care when they're shipping items like this because at the end of the day I mean these are a, these are a mid range price pencil they're still expensive and you know some people just don't appreciate that kind of thing again as I said before I'm not really uh, I don't have like a set light source I was just kind of wanting to make this look pretty so that's all I'm doing and I'm just jumping between these three pencils and deciding you know where where the dark parts are going to be and to be fair it's looking okay so far and I'm enjoying the fact that these sort of shades that are leaning towards green, you can work them together and you're getting something that's slightly different than the pencils that actually come in the tin. So you've got a lot of room for manoeuvre in terms of combinations there. And 
layering them up to create not new colours but different varieties. I do think that if we were on different paper, the likes of this leaf green, which is the one I'm using just now, I think it would be much darker and much more saturated. Uh, I can definitely foresee that being a thing. Again, just having had a bit of experience with the Black Widow pencils before, because I am making the assumption that these pencils are the same formula as the previous, as the, as the previous sets. I am really enjoying the different selection of colours in this set as well. And I think out of all the Black Widow sets, this is probably my favourite. But I really like this for the variety and the fact that it's not a bog standard set. Uh, that, that really, really appeals to me. And if I was in a position where I maybe only had, you know, one good set of artist's pencils, this would be an excellent second set to have that wouldn't break the bank. And I consider myself very fortunate that I'm in a position where I've got pencils coming out my ears. Um, and for a long time that wasn't the case for me. There's lots of nice mid-range priced pencils out there. I quite like the Arteza pencils as well. I quite like them. Um, but as I say, you kind of go through these big sets and they do do them in big sets. And the colours are all much of a muchness. So for me, unless there's a huge variety in the in the makeup of the pencils, uh, you know, like if they're oil based or whatever, unless there's huge differences there, a lot of the mid-price pencils are, you know, they're, they're pretty similar. Whereas buying this set of Monarch pencils, you're going to get something a little bit different. And I said, it's like, if I was playing a video game, this would be the booster pack that I would buy. <laughs> okay, so that's all our dark leaves now. Um, just double checking. For such a small image, there's quite a lot going on in here, but I kind of like that about it. And this is one of my favourite combinations that I've come across so far. And this is Sapphire Emerald with a little bit of Blue Daisy just to ooh, get that little bit of darker detail in there. So again, we're digging quite a lot into these greens here, but they are sort of green into blue. Again, just get this first light layer. So I'm doing the first light layer with the Sapphire. Say so just ever, ever so lightly with, with this first... So now it's a case of, it's just the same technique as before. Um, I'm going in with the emerald this time. And again, just picking out those darker areas. And look at that emerald going down over the top of the, the sapphire. It's just lovely. It's such a nice, rich combination. And then we can kind of blend it out a little bit. And again, that's going down absolutely fine on top. And it's comfortable to know that you can blend it out without too much bother as well so if you've, you've gone a bit ham and you're like oh hang on a minute here it's really easy to to just blend it out so if you as long as you keep a light hand your your quids in so talking about this uh this coloring book a little bit i did say i was going to talk a bit more about that this time one of the the main things about it that i like is the variety in the images not only because you get more than one of some of the letters but also, I, t I mentioned this when I picked this picture out, there's different line weights on some of the images as well. I'm just going to quick grab the book and show you. Um, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, like here, the, you can see that the line width is much, much slimmer compared to this one. So it's giving you a bit more a delicate feel. So if you want less of that sort of illustrative feel, or you maybe want to paint them instead of using coloured pencil, you've got really, really nice options there. And I think it's I think it's just really nice. Like they've, they've thought about it when they've put this book together, they have thought about it. And I also really like the format and the size as well. I quite like square images. Uh, that's something that appeals to me rather than the sort of standard, you know, rectangle. So that's nice as well. And the perforations are really good quality as well. So when you go to tear them out, you know, if you want to give them as gifts or frame them, you you're not running a risk of oh I've coloured this and I might ruin it or I might ruin it before I start. So uh, again, I've, I've come across books in the past where they've had a, that perforated edge so that you can take them out, but the perforation itself is actually a bit ropey. And you know, if you tear something like that, you're, you've kind of ruined it. If the tear's any sort of size, you know, it's not gonna be hidden by the frame. So that's something that's quite important. So the build quality of the actual book, you know, the binding and everything seems to be really good too. So that's a definite plus point as well. But it is just a lovely little book. And if you're looking for something a wee bit different, 
you know, maybe you just need a maybe a change out of the type of things that you've been colouring. I'd highly, highly, highly recommend this because the images are small enough that you know if you're if you're a casual colourist, it's not going to take you months and months to finish one of these. But there's still enough detail in most of them to get that satisfaction that you get when you've spent time colouring something. I really like it for that, and the the images are lovely, and I I do favour the the more sort of detailed work with the, the these thicker outlines um you don't have to be as careful when you're coloring as well which is quite nice when you're using books that have got really fine lines in the artwork you've got to be super careful because it doesn't take much and uh, you've gone outside the lines and you feel like you're five years old again like i can't color inside the lines so we're on to these slightly different types of leaves that i've got this extra section in the middle and although there are lots of different leaf types I wanted to stick to a certain number of colour schemes and it's just because I don't want the actual M to get lost as we go along and the more sets of colour combinations you use the more that's going to disappear because this is quite a busy picture so these types of leaves as well you can see I've done some up here I'm just sticking with the same these same three colours it just helps uh, it helps with a bit of cohesion as well and I just think it's a bit more aesthetically pleasing because it's it's almost like a border because there are lots of leaves surrounding this picture, you know, surrounding the actual letter itself. It's almost as if you're framing the letter and if you use similar colours, you know, like stick to your greens or whatever, that's just going to bring that out a little bit more. I did disconnect my camera and everything over the weekend. Uh, this is um This is Monday I'm filming this. And uh, I was just cleaning basically and I think I've put the camera back up and I haven't quite put it back in the place where it normally sits. I've talked about this before, it's like when someone else drives your car and tries to put the seat back to where you would have it and it's just not quite right and you spend ages fiddling about with it. It's, it's that, that's the same thing. <laughs> that's how I'm feeling about my camera just now. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention today as well, obviously this is Sunday you're seeing this video on. Um, the stash shop will have had an update today, but one of the things that I wanted to mention, which I, ha I haven't up till now, is the items that I am going to be stocking on a more regular basis. So that's like the new art supply section on the website. One of the things that I will have permanently now is a, is a pocket colour wheel. And I've talked about colour wheels before. I did do a video on it. So if that's something you're interested in, I'll link it at the end card and you can go and have a wee, a wee look at that. Even though now um, I'm definitely not a new artist anymore, but my colour theory is not great. I just self-taught, you know. Uh, no, you know, I, wasn't, I didn't learn all these things. I wasn't taught these things. I've just kind of picked it up as I've went along. And the colour wheel is something that I still use quite a lot. The ones, uh, the ones that I've got, I've got this deliberately because it's got two sides to it. And on this side, this is your colour schemes. So complementary, split complementary. But on the other side as well, there's a mixing wheel. So this is really good if you want to, if you're either layering up pencils or if you're working in paint. And I tend to use this for paint because it's something I'm not... Uh, not very skilled with but you can see there if you if you've got a yellow for example if you add a primary blue that's going to give you green and you can slide that round and it will give you all the different combinations of roughly what you're going to get so this is fabulous I, I absolutely love these so these are a permanent feature in the shop and the other thing that I've started stocking as well is Posca pens now I've only got the white Posca pens at the moment because I feel it's um one of the more used colours. So I'm curious to find out um, if I was to stock other colours, is black one that you would find as a colour she would use? I use the little teeny tiny black Posca pen, the one with the really fine nib on it when I'm doing a black background and it's just to get into little spaces and then I'll use acrylic paint on the rest. So if you've got an opinion on that, please let me know because it's important that I find out the kind of things that people would want me to stock, obviously, because if I don't, then nobody's going to buy it. So if you've got any thoughts on that, I would absolutely love to hear them. But see, white, white Posca pens, if it's something you do use, uh, particularly if you're in the UK, um, if you're ready for another one, please consider buying one from the, the Cave Stash. I do have them all as cheap as I possibly can, so the prices are competitive. I am aware that postage is a huge sticking point, and that's something I'm afraid I just can't get around. Uh, so if you're in need of a new white Posca pen, you can always check out 
the ones in the stash shop. I say they're there in two sizes. I keep the 3M, which I would call like a medium nib. And I stock the 1M, which is the little one as well. For all those teeny tiny highlights and fine details that you're going to need. <laughs> the other thing I was going to do as well is I, I was gifted this book. Um, I will find out the price of it. And I'll stick it up on the screen for you just now so that you can see how much you're in for. It is quite a small book in terms of format. But it's quite thick as well. If I just hold it up there. Obviously you've got the full alphabet. So uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a nice quality book though. It's not, it doesn't feel like a cheap book if you know what I mean. And um, that's back to what I was saying about build quality. The recommended retail price on the back is 7 99 And obviously that's in Great British Pounds. I imagine we'll be able to find it cheaper online. Okay, I, I think we're looking fairly good there on that combination. I absolutely love that colour combination of pencils. Like I really do. I'm really into that. Um, again, I'll just uh, reiterate that. So that's Emerald, Blue Daisy and Sapphire. That was the three I used. And it's just such a cheery combination. Really like it. Okay, for this next part that I'd done was the flowers. I was a little bit concerned because if you remember back, there's no true reds or oranges in this set of pencils. It's all like shades of yellow. And this is one of the, the really great ways to demonstrate why you don't actually need those colours. What I've done is I've taken the Aztec gold. So that's kind of like, it's kind of leaning towards orange. But I've taken this rusty colour as well because obviously it has some red in it. And that's how I've managed to get these flowers here. Now at a glance you would say they were orange. So, winner. And I just thought that's a really nice contrast in colour to pop out. And the same theory as before. All these flowers are slightly different, but in the interests of keeping the, the, the page sort of quite uniform, then we want to just keep these all the same. Because in my head, I'm thinking as well, we've got our little snaky friend down here and we've got our birds as well. And I would quite like, a, you know, a fair bit of colour in those. So, oh, I've missed a leaf. Oh, naughty, naughty, naughty. Okay, back to go. Is this a leaf in here or is that, I think that's just a gap. No, I'm going to make this a leaf in here too. I've uh, left some parts of these flowers uncolored and I'm just going to put like a different accent color in there. So now with my rusty pencil, I don't want to put too much of this in because it does uh, quite a dark color and I don't want this to be muddy. So I'm only putting a little tickle of this in and then I'm going in a little bit more heavily with the, with the Aztec gold. And I'm just leaving the very tips of the petals alone so they're you know they're very sort of faint and then if we start in at the base of this next petal so you can see where I'm going with this now but this Aztec gold it's a lovely rich colour I am having to sharpen it a lot just to keep the point on it because some of these spaces are quite tight and I would say that's the only inconvenience but again if you're going to use a softer pencil that's you know that's going to happen it's that's just the way of it and it's not a it's not that there's anything wrong with the pencils, it's just if something soft is going to wear down quickly. I am getting a really nice pointy point on these pencils with my uh, my Tegal Multi Sharpener. I find this is really good for softer pencils. It seems to work well with most of them. I've got this on a number three setting. If I was using Prismacolors, I'd have it on a number two, which would give you a, a shorter but wider point like a stubby point and that just helps with the with the point stability in terms of not having it crumble or break so that seems to be working out quite well so you can see how nice and rich this color is it's just like oh and that again this rusty and the aztec gold seems to be a really nice combination together now i feel these ones in the back are going to be super dark so i'll bring the the aztec um the excuse me the rust rusty quite far up. Okay, the, the next thing I've got here is these darker sections of the actual letter itself. So what I've done is I've taken the darkest pencil from here, which was the lavender, and I've added eggplant to it. So I'm like, I'm going down the shade scale, if you like. So there, because if you remember the first time it was hot pink and lavender, and lavender was the darker colour. So now we've got lavender and eggplant, which is a sort of darker purple colour. And that's what's given me this nice finish down here and along this stripe here. So we'll do these parts. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to incorporate that this darkest purple, the eggplant, into maybe these flowers here or into, you know, some of these other sections. But I'll probably leave that till the end, if I'm honest. So start with the lavender. 
that's our lighter colour and again just as before get that little layer down so we'll pop that in there and then with the eggplant again just little accents you know like we shaded bits as if it's maybe um maybe the top of this kind of like overhangs the ornate part and I know that's a weeny weeny wee bit you'll not be able to see much of that but you'll be able to see better over here the other thing I'm thinking as well is these little sort of baubles I think that's a flower in behind there you dirty little so-and-so I might be the end of that flower I keep this is what's wrong here I keep seeing things I'm like Whoa. yeah there we go that'll do back here uh back to my lavender yeah with these sort of ornate parts that you see here I'm thinking that I would like to mimic what is on the front cover of the book and they've got this little metallic gold accent and I thought that would look really nice on this letter. So we're going to do that at the very, very end. I'm aware that this might be quite a long video, but I didn't want it creeping into three videos. So I will try and edit accordingly and you can see the interesting bits. <laughs> now the eggplant and the lavender seem to play really well together as well. They're two colours that seem to be in harmony, which is really nice. And then we can go back over with the lavender. Do a bit of blendy blendy. And for this section here, all I did was, I'll just do it a little bit at a time, I've got this bit in here. All I did was put the lavender down first and maybe do like two layers of that. And then with the eggplant go in quite heavily and then just sort of blend it together. But more at the edges with the, lav uh, with the eggplant. And again, I'm just, I'm just kind of like picking spots for this. So maybe in here, it might be darker in these parts. And then up this left hand side of this section and then do quite a lot of blending out with the with the lavender so again just sticking with what I was talking about earlier and trying to keep this as cohesive as possible I kind of want my bird and my my birds and this snake to stand out a little bit more so I've got this vine that runs the full way through the letter and I'm going to take the rust color and then I'm going to take one of my greens and I want it to be like um, a sort of earthier shade. So I'm going to go with the, the leaf green and I'm going to utilise this to make this vine look a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to put a light layer of the leaf green down first. So you know, this is a very sort of muted, new, neutral, well it's almost like an olive green. And then if we take this rust colour, I want a really, really sharp point for this, super sharp point. Using straight lines and sort of flicking motions, I just want to add in some lines there. But I want there to be more rust than green. And I hope you can see that okay. There we go, that's pretty good. It actually looks a little bit like rhubarb. I always seem to find it easier to start at the edges when I'm doing that part. Now you can press quite hard when you're doing this because you're not going to be blending it out or going back over it or anything. So you're better to have fewer firm and quick strokes because that gives you that definition and a little bit of texture and interest as well. So the likes of here, this clearly wraps round. When we're doing this, I'm going to have quite a heavy concentration of lines coming out from under here, almost like a shadow. And then the same at the other end and I'll leave the middle a bit bare and it's just so that it gives you that illusion of something wrapping around a corner and that's a really easy and handy way to do it. It's also really useful if you're colouring hair strands, you know if you're doing like a portraiture colouring. I missed another leaf here <laughs> again. Utmost professionalism here in the cave you know. <laughs> I'll go back and get that in a minute. Alright, so time to tackle some of the other elements of this picture now. And one of the things that's nice in this set is there's a really good selection of blues. So that is what I am going to utilise. So I've picked out Ocean, Storm Blue and also Blue Moon. Blue Moon. And I think that's the colours we're going to utilise for parts of our bird and maybe these flowers, maybe the little birds, I haven't decided. I am going to start with the little birds though because um, I think that, that that's the, cute, the cutest little thing in here. So I'm going to use this pale colour on their heads and take the mid colour which is the storm blue and just maybe give them some accents around here, maybe the belly. Oh look, they're so sweet. They're so, so sweet. 
And I think this little guy's tail as well. And on his tail, I'll just take this darkest blue and put in a little bit of shadow here. And I'm going to take the hot pink and Bliss, which is a slightly darker pink. So there is our hot pink. Oh, there we go. I've got two, two little birdies in there. Ah, oh, they're just lovely. And using those same colours, I'm going to come down here to this flower here, which obviously hasn't opened up yet. So we'll get a layer of bliss down on these two. And then I'm going to take the ocean and we're going to have a nice graduation up into this pink. So I want this to be really saturated. So a good couple of layers down in at the base. And then starting from the other end, I'm just going to blend that bliss colour into it. Pretty nice. So we'll carry on with a little bit of that now. Let's fade that out. So really heavy pressure at the bottom and just lighten your pressure up as you come up each section. And then start at the other end. Get that down in there. Yeah. Now just while we're here, I'm going to stick some accents in some of the other flowers. So I think that the two darker colours, so the blue moon and the storm blue, these uh, leaves that have the, the sorts of splits in them, I think this is going to look pretty good in here. So start with the storm. Okay, that was a crumbly, a crumbly pencil moment. I've just cracked <laughs> landed on my arm. Okay. Okay, so I've had a little bit of a, a disaster there, but it's tucked in this back wing of the bird, so not too concerned about it, to be truthful. And for this flower up here, I want to keep in with the blues. This colour is denim, so it's quite a pale blue. And I think I'm going to alternate the sections here as much as I can. And then we'll use the darker blues again. So we've got ocean first and then we can take our storm blue. And I think we'll use the denim as well. In these flowers, we've got these little areas where we've got some accents. You know, I wanted a little bit of variation there. So that this is the one that's screaming out to me. It's like, oh, colour me blue. So we're just going to take the denim pencil and get this in here. I actually really like this colour of blue. It's lovely. Really nice. Very delicate. I never coloured in that leaf. <laughs> it just caught my eye again. Oh, me oh my. And then I can take the ocean. I don't know if the microphone's picking up the birds all singing outside. They're all chirping away in the trees. They're obviously happy. Pip's got a bit of a thing about chasing pigeons just now. That's her thing. And you've got to be careful saying the, the P word. The P word. Because if she's outside, she starts tearing around the garden looking for them. <laughs> now these areas in here, are, excuse me, are really small to be doing anything with. So I'm just going to take the ocean. You don't want to be messing about blending in areas that size. That's just, that's just silly. So not doing anything different here. Just the same pencils. And just picking spots to add in the darker blues. And again, that's just to give us a bit of contrast and separate, especially the areas where there's two blue parts side by side. And that just helps to give you a little bit of contrast and also that illusion that maybe this is, you know, you can see that this is tucked under. Just smooth that out a little bit in places, a wee bit patchy there. Just a blendy blendy. Now I think I'm going to go back to the Aztec gold. I'm just looking at the edge of this flower here and I feel like this should be this Aztec gold colour. And that's just going to be flat Aztec gold. Not mixing it with anything. Just make sure it's nice and even and vibrant. It's a lovely colour, that. Really nice colour. For our little snaky friend down here, <laughs> the perfect colour for him is Passion, which is that sort of chartreuse type colour. I think that's a, per a perfect snake colour. Like, this pencil was designed for this picture. <laughs> so I'm just going to go right ahead and I'm going to colour him in. Oh, this is a great colour. Yes, yes, yes. That nice sort of greenish yellow. Oh, look at him. He's lovely. <laughs> oh, my little sneaky friend. Okay, so just to add a little bit to that, we're going to take the colour green tea. And we're just going to give him a little bit of an accent here and there. You can see where I'm going with this. You know, it's the same, the same idea, the same technique. These things don't have to be complicated to look good. If we just add a little bit of that in every every now and then, it just makes that tiny difference. And when you add up all those tiny differences, you get something quite cool. Now, see, I really want to use the lavender, but it's too close to what's going on here. So I think we may employ the storm blue and just do a graduated sort of fade 
So we'll just have a little bit of one pencil shade in here. Oh, he's a handsome little fella. I think he might actually be my favourite part of this, <laughs> this whole colouring. Oh, that's hilarious. I've got these parts to do as well. Oh, I'm so easily amused, I really am, especially when it comes to animals. <laughs> This little sneaky guy's awesome. Okay, time to, to deal with our birdie friend. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this Aztec gold and I'm going to grab mango. So this was into the, we were talking about the, the paler colours on this spectrum here. So we're kind of in this bracket. So we're going to use this for the beat and then using the Aztec gold. Sort of beef it up a little bit. And then for this, um, for this face area, I was thinking more about the like a sort of pale pinky colour and I don't know if this is going to work but I'm going to grab candy and I'm going to grab fudge. Now candy is a, the very very pale colour so we're just going to get a little bit of that started here and we've got quite a nice big area to work in here as well so we can get a little bit of blending going on, a little bit of variance in the colour. So I'm thinking that if we take the fudge around this outside area it's really easy to fade that in <laughs> to the to the candy colour because it's so delicate and that's going to give you a really subtle but nice blend. So we do want this to continue on, you know, we don't want like a sort of multicolour swap shop effort here. So just picking out certain parts, so maybe this part down the back here and again we've got a nice big area there so we can make that quite obvious that there's a darker part and then it goes down into the paler part. And I feel like this midsection of the wing, so not the patterned part, but the feathers underneath there that are not quite the tail feathers. So these ones in here, just indicate those out for you with the candy. And then in with this fudge colour. So at the top part, so where the overlap starts from the, the feathers above, get some really nice thick layers of the, the fudge colour down so that we can really see that difference between the two. You know, I want that to be quite obvious. I don't really want to blend that out as much. Okay, that's quite nice. We've got quite a nice spread of that colour there. And we're going to counterbalance that with these sort of turquoisey shades. So we want sky and probably opal, I think would be a good idea. We've got cat's eye as well, which is a bit more muted, but that might actually be quite nice. So let's start with this crest at the top here. That's a lovely colour. And then I can grab this opal. Let me just blend that out. We'll maybe put a little hint of it in here. Okay, so using the cat size, so use this as kind of like um, so in the like the low lighted section of the birds. And again, this is talking about contrast because if you have two very different colours side by side, then they're they're going to stand out a bit more. But this section here, where we've got these little circles, I'm going to make those gold. So I'm going to use the cat's eye because it's the more muted shade of what we've got here. And I'm just going to colour that flat colour because we really want those gold accents to stand out. And these two sections here as well. In fact, all three sections make those cat's eye as well. And we'll maybe take a little bit of the opal again just to make these a little bit more interesting. Now down in these bottom feathers, the tail feathers, I'm going to use the same colours but I'm also going to reintroduce Blue Daisy and that was the colour we used to just put some accents in on some of these leaves. So we've got a layer of that sky colour down now and then we're going to grab the opal. Now we need to keep a light hand here, so we're going to have a little bit in here, just as a shadow. And then towards the end of the tail feathers, we're going to flick up the way, don't press too heavily mind. And then we're going to take the blue daisy and we're going to introduce that right at the bottom. And then if we just go back to our sky pencil and very gently just go back over everything we've done. Just to blend it out a little bit. I have left some of those flicky lines in just to give us a little bit of texture there. Yeah, so I'm going to go back to fudge and blue, uh, not hot pink, <laughs> fudge and candy. Yeah, back to fudge and candy and I'll put down a little bit of the candy in these sections here. This is such a lot, this is a really nice combination of, of pencils as well. It's very, very delicate and subtle, but it's so nice. Very calming. I'll get a little bit of the fudge in there. And then just back in with it, the candy and as we've done before. And I'll take my opal pencil here and just work my way around these feathers. And then with the blue daisy. And just for these little patterned shoulder sections, I'm going to go back to the colours that we used for the beak, which was the mango and the Aztec gold. And I'm just going to pop some of them in there. 
I'm not really into these intricate pattern sections. They kind of put me in mind of Millie Marotta's colouring books. And it's too pattern-esque for my liking. Um, I find th repetitive things like that very um, uninteresting to colour. So I tend to kind of lump them together. There we go, that's looking fairly good. Okay, for the finishing touches, I have the Gansai Tambay Starry Colours paints here. And I'm going to use the yellow gold. You can see it's the one I use most often. It's got a big dent in it. I have a number two sea white brush here these are the brushes that i still sell in the stash shop i like them because they are synthetic bristles and the they come to a very very fine point so for things like this it's really really good and um, you can use a water brush for this if you if you're more that way inclined but i just tend to find i have better control with uh, you know with the water with a normal paintbrush but this paint is fab I've had these paints for such a long time as well. I got these in my very first ever scroller box that I ordered. And uh, I, I do use them fairly, fairly frequently. Okay, so I'm going to work right to left here just because I'm left-handed. I say that a lot too. I've just realised I've missed out some of the middles of these little flowers. I'm, I keep seeing things that I've missed. <laughs> it's getting quite annoying. Uh, I think that's everything now. Okay. Right, so yes, just using this gold paint... And we're going to very carefully start filling in all of our little accents here. And this is just going to look fabulous. Now, the nice thing about this is you don't have to be super careful. You have to be relatively careful, to be fair. Um, you don't have to be mega careful because if you do venture outside of the lines, you can go back over them with a black fine liner. So it's not the end of the world if you're slightly errant or maybe not as accurate as you feel you should be. But having a, a very fine point on a brush is really helpful. You could probably go a size smaller. Um, you could probably go down to the number one in the sea white brushes. But this was the smallest one that was to hand, you know, like, because, I, yeah, I've just got a lot of paint brushes. So. Oh, that's so nice. So if I tilt that in the light already, you'll be able to see it's starting to shimmer. You don't get the full effect till it's dry, obviously. But we'll keep going here. There we are. We're starting to get there now. Just working my way up this M. It's much nicer having the big spaces to work in because I, I kind of hold my breath when I'm doing these tiny little bits. So when I get to the bigger circles, I'm like, oh. <sighs> exhale. I used to do that a lot when I first started um, arting in general. I found myself holding my breath an awful lot and I had to sort of remind myself that it was okay to breathe. Better now, but I still do it when I'm doing really tiny, <laughs> tiny details like this. I still do it. Can't help it. <laughs> Someone had commented recently as well about being able to talk and paint at the same time. When I first started doing these videos, I could not talk and draw or talk and paint at the same time. I was okay colouring, but when it came to actually having to, you know, really concentrate on something, I couldn't do it. It's taken me three years to get to the point where I can do this, and even then, sometimes I have to not do it. It's definitely a, definitely a skill to be le learned when it comes, and it's not something you think about being a YouTuber. You don't think that's something that you're actually going to have to tackle at any point. I'm going to make his little rattlesnake tail parts gold as well. Why not? He's a smashing little chap. Okay, so we've just got this last little bit to do now. Down the bottom here. And then that's us. We're done. Ta-da! I would just like to zoom out for you to see the full extent of the chaos on the desk here. Oh my goodness, there's pencils and everything everywhere. Anyway, that is us. We are done. And I have to say, bar a few initial sort of missteps when we first started with the pencils, having got used to them, and more to the point, having got used to them behaving a certain way on this paper, I think that these are, these are great pencils. I would still maintain that you wouldn't buy these as your main set of pencils because it's lacking in so many colours. But if you have any brand of wax-based pencil, these would be an excellent addition for the slightly uh, stranger colour selection. And if you're wanting those sort of subtle differences in shades, this set of pencils is perfect. I've really enjoyed using them. I've had no problems with breakages and I'm quite impressed with the colour selection. The only niggle that I have is that inconsistency between the lay down and some of the pencils. It's quite stark compared to other brands. But apart from that, I really have nothing but good things to say about these Monarch pencils. The book's absolutely lovely as well. I would be interested to try out different types
types of pencil on this paper. Uh, I think there would be a more optimal set of pencils to use rather than the Black Widow sets. But that's something I'll maybe explore in my spare time. I would love to know your thoughts on the pencils. I would love to know your thoughts on this lovely little colouring book as well. And I am absolutely delighted to have been gifted these things and show you this video. So thanks again to the, the donators. I really, really appreciate it. And we will see you back in the cave on Thursday for another video. Remember to go over to the cave stash and check that out today because there's new items in there. Thanks for watching everyone. Please stay safe, take care of each other and bye bye for now.